Would you be willing to do whatever necessary to preserve something important to you? This is a question that many have faced, but few have acted on. However, when people do act on it, this tends to be passionate and tends to last for a long time. This year marks the 50th anniversary of one of those acts. This is known as the Wilderness Act. About 50 years ago, and in the time leading up to that, the Earth, and America in particular, was in an awful state. There was garbage everywhere, there was lots of pollution, people just didn't care how they were treating each other and how they were treating the land around them. They had no sense of preservation, they had no care for the future or the future generations. And some people saw a very real problem with this, and they saw very real issues that may come from it. The solution that they came up with was from the Wilderness Society by um, Howard Zonaser. Howard Zonaser was the man who specifically wrote the Wilderness Act. This was in 1964. Wilderness.org sums up the Wilderness Act in the following statement. This movement created a way for Congress and Americans to designate wilderness areas which represent the nation's highest form of land protection. No roads, vehicles, or permanent structures are allowed in designated wilderness. A wilderness designation also prohibit, prohibits activities like logging or mining. So basically, this means that in specified areas, people aren't allowed to use any technology at all, more or less, or at least anything that impacts the land. One example locally that we have is Shenandoah National Park. And in certain areas, you can't even have a wheelbarrow there. And even though this is convenient in some ways, it's also inconvenient in others because those who have to maintain the land have to do a whole lot more work than if you had technology. Um, this summer, I had the opportunity to work for the Youth Conservation Corps in Shenandoah National Park. And it was fun, but at times very tolling. And this was because we had to use different technology than modern technology. At certain points, we worked with maintaining trails in areas that were specified wilderness. And instead of using, say, a weed eater, we had to use something called a weed whip, which is this right here. This is basically what we had to use. And we would be in full uniform, which is what I'm wearing here, walking up um, mountains like that. We also had um, to wear personal protective equipment. So in the heat, we also had to have our gloves on. We had to have hats on, and we had to have glasses on while carrying our packs of water, food, and any other things that we may need. And we would um, use those as um, we'd swing them and basically hit the grass until it was flat, and that's how we would maintain the trails. So even though it may look nice, it is not very fun at some points because we would do up to eight miles a day of that, up and down mountains, which was very intense. Um, this right here is actually one of the views from Shenandoah National Park. I didn't take that picture, but this is something that you may see any given day being there because it's so beautiful. And there are some perks. Over here, there's a butterfly on my face because butterflies are drawn to salt. And when you are literally dripping sweat, butterflies are going to be interested in that. So you may end up having butterflies on your face, which is a nice little perk. There are actually men who do this every day for several months out of the year. They don't just maintain trails. They also build rock walls, or they do things like that using their hands. They, um, if we, for example, came on a trail and there, was, there were a log in the way, they would have to get out hand saws and saw the entire tree while there and move that with simply ropes. So it's a lot of work and it's a struggle at some points, but given the benefits of it, it does seem worth it. Thank you.